Affinity Designer 2.5 is a new feature, the Stroke Width Tool. What does it do? It modifies the stroke at particular points around the curve. So you might have, say, 37 all the way around, but you want like five at one point, 25 at another point, and 50 at another point. So let's just go and select it. Here it is. So Stroke Width Tool. That's W on the keyboard. And you can click anywhere. So just click and then just drag you can drag it out drag it like that and you can see the stroke width will change now it changes all the way around for all these other all these other locations but they don't have these control points and you can change that and you can click again you can add multiple i don't know if there's a limit there might be a limit maybe 50 500 i don't know but you can add these and then simply Click and you can then drag out and you can reach, go to the max. However, you notice what happens when you push it too far, it will sort of go very strange, and go all over the place. So you can push it only so far, really. Well, what you can also do, is you can add others. So click there, you can add all the way around. And then go back to one and you can drag that out. So you can create sort of a crackle or zigzag design all the way around if you wish. And you can click here, say, and drag that out, click here, and drag that in. And you can create something like that. But there's also some modifiers as well. So along the top, once you select this tool, the stroke width tool, along here, you've got this option, lock line weight. At the moment, it's not locking it. So when I go to here and I can click there, and I can drag out, and I can click it and drag it out as far as I want to obviously within the limit, that the system will allow. But if you turn it on, so now it's locked. If I drag this out, so this one here, just drag it out, there's a certain point it will reach, and you'll notice the one it's reaching, that's the maximum width here. It will only go as far as the maximum allowed because of this one. Now I can go to this one, again, just reduce it down, and I can go to this one, and I can reduce that down, and now if I go out there again, drag out, that's it. It still will only allow me to go as far as that's defined. And it could be any of the points. Doesn't matter, there's no one control point that defines the maximum. But you need to set, if you've got one that's set, it will go, all the others will only go that far. There's also another option, and let's just undo these so you can see it a bit more clearly. I'm just going to remove some of those points. Well, you go, just click around there, and you can add, say, multiple, maybe 50, 100, I don't know. When this is lock point ordering is not actually set on, means when you go here, I can drag that one, I can drag it around. I can go all the way around, backwards and forwards. It's not locked. It will go past one. It will reorder those lock points or control points. If I turn it on, now it's turned on. And then you see what happens. It just will not let me go past that. It stops it. So I will hit that point and that is it. And I'm going to say another one there. So select that one and it will only go so far. Just drag it, drag it there, drag it there. Now I've noticed a few glitches in this. Sometimes I've clicked one and it just will not drag at all. So I don't know if it, every single feature works exactly right. And there seems to be other quirks to it as well. But I'm just going to put them back on. Now the snap, to be honest, I don't know. <laughs> I have to say, I've tried to follow their examples and I haven't noticed any difference. So maybe there's something there. Please put in the comments if you've had more joy with these snap options. Personally, I haven't. But there's also a few other things you can do as well. So let's just go over here and you can resize that. Now what you can also do is, say you want to get rid of it. Think, I don't want that point at all. And of course you could sort of just join it close to the other one and it, you wouldn't notice it. But you can simply just double click and it's gone. So you can click, but you can always double click and that will remove it. So that deletes it. You can also go here, click, 
and then drag it out. But you'll notice what happens. That point, that lock point, is quite easy to move. You just move it back accidentally. You might not want to do that. What you can do, hold down the shift. And you can then resize it like that, just drag it out, and it will not just randomly move. So it's just fixed in that position if you hold the shift key down. And you can see then, if I go to this one, say here, click there, and I can then, but it's so easy to move. So hold down the shift, then only this will be dragged out. It will not move as you drag, which is quite easy to do. And release. Another option is you can go to a point here, hold down the control. Now, in documentation, it says the command on the Mac, which I find slightly confusing because when I try it and I click on that, it doesn't have the desired effect. If I hold the control key down, and it's the control key on the PC as well, but hold control key down and click, it will come up with set stroke width at point. And now I can set it manually. So I can go and, because of course you might not want, you might want to define it, say 20, then 50, then 20, then 50, then 20, and then 50, all the way around. Now you could do that, but it's probably going to be tricky and very frustrating. But you can do it, of course here you can just put in 50 and OK. Or you would think, click OK. Another bit of a glitch there. For some weird reason, the OK was not available at that point. So, But you can press return on the keyboard and it has the desired effect. And you can do again. So go over here, then control, click, and brings it up. Gain, there, you put 25, say, and then tab off it. Slightly odd, but anyway, click OK. If you hold the control down and go to a point, not clicking it, that's the key thing, not clicking it, what you can do, you can just select it and then move it around. Now the width will not change. So you can just drag it back and forth like that, and you can see the width doesn't change. So if I go over here and like say drag this out this far, and I go this one, say add another point, reduce it down. But let's just go back to this one. With this one, if I do that, what happens is it just reduces down. It, it, but what you can do is hold the control down and then move it back and forth and the width will not change, which is nice so you can constrain it and it will go all the way there. And it, of course, because of the ordering is not stopped, it will go through that point and you can go back and forth, but it's still the same width. Now I've been showing that with just a circle. And of course it could be with any other shape as well. But what you can also do, let's just go to the pencil tool. So pencil tool and just create a very quick design. Oh, maybe something slightly better than that, but say like that. Doesn't matter particularly, just want to now demonstrate, you can use the same features. So with this, again, go over here, the stroke width tool. So select that. And then you can go here and you can just drag this out. And you can see, now it does create some slightly weird, I think that could be better, I don't know personally, but I would prefer something slightly better than that. Now what you can also do is you can click there, say. Now you'll notice there, you just reduce it down. It does have a bit of a, it does have a snap in there. I can see that snap in just at that point. Maybe it's more noticeable in particular, different curves. And again, you can click here and then add and drag, so you can reduce that down. Maybe click there, and then add another point and create all kinds of different designs. Now, it does seem to be a bit jittery there. Just increase that. Now, let's just go down to this one and do exactly the same. You can stretch it out. It does seem to be slightly odd, but you can create really unusual, and hopefully more beautiful curved designs using this approach. And let's just, again, let's go and select another thing and I'm just going to use my pen tool. So now I'll quickly just draw something like that and what I can then do again go here to the stroke width and I can again click here and just drag this out click there drag that out and click there and drag that out click there and drag that in and you can see you can create a much more sort of lovely stroke design. 
Sometimes it looks better than other times. What you can also do is you can use this with another feature of Affinity Designer. Let's just go over here and create a rectangle. You'll notice you've got a stroke here in the appearance panel. Well, what you can do, you've got that selected. You can add a stroke. So let's just add another stroke. This one I'm going to click and I'm going to set it to red. And I'm going to increase the size. So let's just increase the size. And you can see I've put it to 18. I've got 18, I've got 37. Now, this one, the red one, is currently selected. Go to the Stroke Width tool. And now I can click here and I can drag this out. You can see the red will change. So I can make a very thin there. I can gain, click another point, make that a lot bigger, click another point, make that a lot thinner, and so on. You can see you can create all kinds of, they're independent. So if I go now to this stroke, make certain you select the black and now go along the line and just go hover along this line and you'll see a little plus. Now, sometimes, weirdly, it doesn't seem to appear. Not certain why, but I have noticed during a few tests that just sometimes I can go over this, hover over this, no plus appears. Eventually it does, but I've gone backwards and forwards over here just to reselect it. Then it seems, there you are, what I mean? It now doesn't seem to let me access that line. So click there, and then click there again. But something sometimes if you just go over it again, Eventually, it does seem to come up with a plus again, which is slightly odd. But anyway, you can see then you can manipulate the black. But there's definitely a bit of a quirk with the way it works. And again, you can just increase the size there and click there and decrease it and so on. And you can always go back to this stroke and hopefully it does allow. Now, see, again, it doesn't suddenly, cursor doesn't change, but eventually it does if you just click it just subtly, not on the line, but just away from it. And then you can modify that. It just seems to be slightly weird the way it works. But you can see you can use the appearance panel to create a more complex design with your strokes. So this one, the stroke width tool, certainly there's a lot more to discover with this tool and ways of using it, maybe with all the other tools within Affinity Designer. And I hope to do videos on those as well. So please put some comments. Will you be using this feature? Will you use this tool? Do you think it works really well? I, like I say, doing the initial testing, I found odd times when it just doesn't seem to work in the way that's consistent. Also, the snap seems to have a mind of its own if it does anything. I've done it a few times, noticed it's, it does seem to have an effect, and then other times I've gone to it and I can't seem to reproduce it. Perhaps just me. Anyway, hope you like this video. Dislike the video. All appreciated. Bye.